Hi everyone, our video today discusses how to create a Google My Maps layered map. Our uh, previous video uh, that you watched for class uh, covered how to do a basic map, which is just a single layer importing uh, a, a set of a spreadsheet full of pinpoints uh, and locating them on a map. Now we're going to dig in a little deeper and layer those pinpoints on top of a background. Uh, typically called a KML file, Keyhole Markup Language. You'll see the file extension is .KML is typically what you will find. So um, to start uh, with this, you want to go into our Week 2 folder, um, which uh, for the uh, summer class is, is Week 2. For uh, some of the other classes, it might be a little later in the semester. Um, we have uh, data scraping this week and math for journalists, very busy week. Uh, go into the Google My Maps section. Um, and uh, if you haven't already, make sure you play through this little example, uh, set of examples here and tips on what makes a good interactive map. Um, and make sure you open up the go uh, Google My Maps uh, assignment. Um, and also, uh, you will uh, should have downloaded the Google My Maps Bike Cities, which was uh, uh, the previous video's exercise. Um, and then you can uh, download Potholes Patched. I'll also have a little file in here. Uh, called Chicago Homicides, uh, which has homicides uh, year by year, things like that, uh, that we can work with uh, as well. Um, but we're going to do the potholes patched and uh, the, also this little shape file of Chicago boundaries. Uh, and I'll show you in a minute where I get this from. This is a KML file, keyhole markup language uh, file, of all the Chicago community areas, basically the neighborhoods. Uh, and their borders, and it will lay out the shape file on your map. And then we're going to uh, uh, take all the potholes uh, from 2014 and uh, uh, map all the potholes in Chicago so you can see which neighborhoods have the most potholes, which is kind of fun. Um, so to do so, uh, download both of these to your desktop. Like I've got them sitting out here. I've got uh, potholes patched and uh, uh, also the um, uh, my maps uh, boundaries, the KML shape file. And then open mymaps.google.com, mymaps.google.com. Um, and you'll want to go in and create a new map, just like you'd done earlier with the cycling cities. And always label your layers. The vi tr previous training video that Google did doesn't talk about the importance of this, uh, but I'm going to stress it. Uh, instead of untitled layer here, you should always title your layers and rename them by clicking on this uh, little mini hamburger here and then uh, clicking on rename. And I'm gonna name this first one Neighborhoods. You can do them all caps or up low, upper lower, it doesn't matter. And first thing I'm gonna grab here is this keyhole markup language file. This is the shape file of all the Chicago neighborhood boundaries. And we have all kinds of different shape files. We've got all the counties in the state of Illinois. We've got uh, uh, shape of all the states uh, in the US. Uh, congressional districts, counties uh, in the U.S., you name it. Uh, there's all kinds of different stuff here. So click on the import button and you bring the shape file in the same way you would a regular uh, uh, spreadsheet. So it takes a while for it to load. You just have to be patient. Uh, the good old city of Chicago data portal uh, gives you the shape file of all the uh, neighborhoods in Pepto-Bismol pink. Um, there are some files uh, that they're a little more sophisticated and they give it to you in uh, uh, gray, but this is Pepto-Bismol pink. So to get rid of this uh, pink coloring, uh, you're going to have to go in, and this does take a little bit of work, but it pays off in the end. And, and you can transfer over to, to more earthy tones here. Um, and I'll kind of show you, just click on neighborhood by neighborhood. And you'll get into some better colors here. So you'd have to go through and kind of uh, sh change all these colors. Don't you know? You don't want to layer the uh, pinpoints over the pink. The other thing you you'll want to do too, and, and this does take some time. Notice how it says untitled up here, but has Logan Square uh, mentioned here under the community name. Click on the little pencil and type in Logan Square up here, and then you can uncheck the areas that you don't need to put anything in, like. Uh, uh, the area number and the description, perimeter, you can turn off community area. Some of these other numbers here don't matter. Kind of leave the shape area in because that uh, uh, helps it uh, uh, design it on the page. Um, so it's good to have that in there. 
Um, so here you have uh, uh, you know, a headline over each one. It also appears over here in your legend instead of a bunch of untitled. So again, it does take some work, um, but uh, you, know, you will have a much better looking map uh, because of it. Um, if you need to move your map around, hold down on the cursor key and just move on your trackpad or your mouse. Uh, zoom in, zoom out in the lower right so you can zoom in and get more detailed. Um, I always title my maps too pretty early on, so click on Untitled Map and 2014 Chicago Potholes. And I'm going to put in the description Pothole Repairs and Complaints by City Neighborhood. And you always have to have a description and a headline on your uh, post. Uh, on your map because people find your map two different ways. Uh, they find it by uh, uh, finding the story with your uh, map embedded into your story so they have context. But they can also find it by searching Google Maps or in Google. And if they come to your map and don't have you know a headline, a description, and your credit there, uh, they're going to leave right away. They're not going to spend a lot of time there. So in the interest of time, I'm not going to color all uh, of the Chicago neighborhoods here. Uh, I'm go am going to take it though. Uh, and layer in our potholes. And this spreadsheet of all the potholes, I'll open it up here in Excel to let you see it first. So you can see the detail that's in here. This came from the City of Chicago's data portal, which I'll show you in a minute. It's got a date that it was created, um, a, a street address, uh, longitude and latitude. Google Maps will re recognize street addresses, names of you know, well-known buildings, longitude and latitude. So it'll recognize many different types of address, postal codes, things like that. It's got the police district, uh, uh, the, the uh, aldermanic ward, uh, all kinds of different things in here. I, I would probably clean some of this stuff out of here. Uh, there's you know, just some registration numbers and things like that that just don't really matter. Um, but, uh, you know, you can always uh, take those in and, and uh, add them and subtract them uh, as need be. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add a layer. Um, so click Add Layer. And we're going to label this new layer by hitting Rename. We're going to call it Potholes. And this is important to layer, uh, name these layers because sometimes you'll do uh, maps that have multiple layers to them and maybe have multiple people working on them. Uh, if you come back, you have to edit your map in a few weeks uh, or even a few months later. Uh, boy, it's not a lot of fun to go in there and have to dig around through a bunch of untitled layers. So to move your potholes over, take your spreadsheet and drag it over into that layer import. Um, and it does ask you how to position your place marks. And it should default to latitude, longitude. You could do street address too, but latitude, longitude is a little more precise. So go ahead and hit continue. Um, it'll ask you to title your place marks. Um, uh, there's any number of different uh, ways you could label this. Um, I would probably select either location or in this case, probably street address because it gives a little more uh, detail. Notice it has this category too, number of potholes filled on block. That's an interesting little uh, uh, field there because some of these uh, blocks have 82 potholes on them, which is basically a resurfacing. Uh, so uh, you can see which uh, streets have the, the most potholes or in the worst shape. So go ahead and hit finish. And it'll take a second because this one's a little longer than the uh, bike cities, uh, which was only 20 rows to your uh, map layer. Uh, this one is much more. And now you can start to see, you know, how they shape up by neighborhood, where there's a lot of pothole repairs, or where there's not. Um, could make for, you know, an interesting little post. And as you click on here, it's got all of your little details here. Uh, again, I would probably click the edit button uh, and uh, turn off some of the stuff uh, that I don't need here. Um, I probably don't need uh, police district. I would leave the ward on there. Um, number of pothole repairs I'd want. Um, current activity, I could turn off. Um, even this pothole and street, because we already know they're all potholes. Uh, service request number, completion date, and uh, in, in the fact that it's been completed is pretty important. Um, so go ahead and hit save there. And then it'll take out, you know, and kind of shorten up. And it'll do this to all of them. Um, and it gives the street address in there too. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, now we want to take and make our uh, map public. Let's go ahead and hit that share button. And it defaults to private, so only you can see it. But now if we're ready to publish, make it public and hit save. And click done. 
So now it's live on the web. It's searchable. People can see it. Um, you also can go in now um, and get grab the embed code uh, by going to embed on my site. Um, uh, again, with uh, your Medium accounts, uh, the embed code won't work. So just grab the link up here, but do this after you've published it. Um, and then go into Medium. And then you can go in and I'm going to create a new story. And again, you'll write, write a couple hundred words with yours. Um, and just hit return each time to get the new interface. Um, hit the plus sign. And this gives you the embed button right here. And just paste that link right in there to that map. Hit return. It may take a second for it to pop up. Um, sometimes it, it won't pop up at all. Um, it, it'll just show the uh, link code. That's okay. After you publish it, uh, it will show up. And you have a nice little map embedded in here now. Um, then you hit publish, and away you go. Uh, and that's all there is to it with Google My Maps. Now, how do we find the shape files, like the one I'm giving you of the Chicago neighborhoods? A website to go to for that. You can find them at many different levels, data.gov for national and federal ones. Uh, you know, there's ones of other countries. Um, but for local ones, you'll want to go to the City of Chicago data portal, data.cityofchicago.org. So pause for a second and go ahead and type in data cityofchicago.org and then open up the video again and we'll go through it. Okay, welcome back. Uh, the City of Chicago data portal full of all kinds of uh, data sets. Uh, the potholes data set that I just uh, showed you was pulled from the City of Chicago's data portal. I pulled it from the transportation section down here. But for shapes, shapes of neighborhoods, if I wanted all the congressional districts in Chicago, postal codes, you know, the zip codes, things like that, you can go into this little area here called Facilities and Geographic Boundaries and click on that. And here it is, Community Areas, which is a little different than Neighborhoods. This is the official community areas like Lakeview. Um, zip codes are right here. The neighborhood boundaries are kind of the unofficial neighborhoods in the city, like Wrigleyville and things like that. Um, Wrigleyville isn't a, a, a officially recognized neighborhood. It's known as a community area because it's, uh, it's part of the larger community area known as Lakeview. Um, we also have the Aldermanic Wards, Central Business Districts. You can go right through here. Uh, all the uh, ward precincts for the aldermen. So if I wanted to do you know, potholes by ward precincts, um, you can just go into these. Uh, and click on them uh, and download them. So if I wanted zip codes, if I wanted to look at, uh, you know, potholes by zip code, um, I could do so. Um, and this one is very, we're very lucky. It's uh, actually this nice uh, gray color, so we don't have to go and color code it. Um, and if you want this, um, you can take it and hit the export button. It gives you different formats. KML and KMZ are fine. They both work well. Uh, with most mapping software, shape files are more kind of a raw one. Uh, most uh, tools also will take a GeoJSON uh, file as well. Um, KML file, you just hit this and, and you can download it to your desktop just like I have there. So um, really easy to go in and find those shape files uh, on the Google Data Portal or, or the Google Data Portal, the City of Chicago Data Portal. Um, so I went back to the home page now. Um, and you can dig through these different areas here. There's you know all kinds of great stuff. I also want to show you the transportation area because that also has some shape files in it uh, that are helpful for you. And you can search them by file type too up here, KML, KMZ, of whatever you wanted. Um, it also has things like bus routes uh, in, in here, a shape file of all the bus routes. Um, uh, it also has all the L uh, stations, shape file of all the L station lines, L stations and all the L lines. Um, it also has, uh, you know, locations of all the bridges, um, uh, all kinds of different shape files in here that you can pull from that are related to uh, uh, transportation. Um, uh, one has all the streets labeled that you just saw there. And it'll show down here what type of uh, file it is. If it's, it says GIS or KML, uh, shape file, something like that, uh, down here in the tags, that's usually a pretty good uh, indicator of what type of format it is so you don't have to go in and open it up. 
um, and, and go through and see what type of file it is. So um, again, that's the City of Chicago's data portal. Quick, quick little tour of that, uh, data.cityofchicago.org. Um, and for your uh, mapping project, you're going to want to create a layered map. Um, so, uh, you know, the assignment uh, uh, is over in your class folder, in the My Maps folder, the My Maps uh, assignment, which is right here. Um, and make sure, you know, you've looked through that and read it closely so you understand what we're after here for the assignment. Um, it's basically recreating a map similar to what I just showed you here, a layered map with a sheet file and uh, with uh, certain locations. It's good to focus on Chicago with this one. Um, just because you have the city's data portal and you're familiar with it. Um, you can venture outside of Chicago if you like with the assignment, uh, but it's a little easier to do it uh, uh, by layer layering this way. Some of you have some experience with Google Maps, um, either from other classes or, you know, if you've taken my digital class previous to this. Um, but this is a little more sophisticated in that we're starting to layer things on top of the map. So that's all we have for now. Good luck on the assignment. We'll see you later.